Hello, I am joined this morning by Anthony Brandreth, who is going to help me get involved in the Big Garden Bird Watch. And it's all part of Mooring Common Holton's Birds of Hope. So welcome. Thank you. Good morning. How are you? Are you I'm okay? good. I'm good. I'm all ready. I've got my bird, bird book and some oh, binoculars. They might just be props. I don't know. <laughs> I just I have can, to be prepared. I can see outside your window as well. You've got a, uh, a bird table on there. I've I've had blackbirds already this morning. So right. um, if I if I if I look like I don't know where I'm looking, it's because I'm looking at the screen, looking at that. <laughs> so All right. I'm, I'm not being mesmerised. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so so tell me about a, a little bit about birds of hope then. I mean, I've seen some of the stuff on social media, and obviously, you know, being part of kind of more in common uh, in in other ways, but. Give us a, a, a bit of an outline just for me, really. Yeah, well, it, it came about because we were talking, some of us involved in More in Common, um, me and Laura Bevan particularly, about, you know, all the stuff people were doing before Christmas. We were doing a lot of um, light up your windows and decorate your windows and trying to spread a bit more joy and all that. And it's, I suppose, in a way, it's easier at Christmas because a majority of people put lights up and it, it does feel like an outward sharing of, of uplifting kind of uh, visuals um, and we thought it would be nice to have something like that in January and February when it when it is a little bit more difficult a little bit dark a little bit grimmer um, and obviously we were aware of you know the the, the potentials of, of going into further lockdowns and what have you so yeah. we we kind of chatted about what what would that be and then we realized that VPET which I'm part of and that you uh, um supported in the past would usually do a big garden bird watch for the RSPB um, in the park in Victoria Park so VPET our Victoria Park environment team based in the glass houses in, in Victoria Park in Witness and we thought is there a way of combining that because um, well, at first we thought we might be able to get you to do a walk around like you normally do for us, um, but obviously that would include too many people meeting. So we thought it's um, you know better to get you involved still and encourage people to be able to take part in it, regardless whether they're stuck in or whether they can go out by themselves or on a walk. So the the two parts of the Birds of Hope are decorating your windows with the templates that we've put on the website. So it's on the Studio Witness. Um, website and you can download all the pictures there's about four or five different activities you can do to decorate your windows and and write messages of hope and you know draw birds and things like that um, and also people are taking pictures of birds and, and tagging us in as well so that's lovely to see them in the front garden and then also um getting people to take part in their big garden bird watch so this is where we thought of you obviously because you've helped be pet in the past we wanted to get together as more in common doors, bringing lots of different groups together. So it's VPET, the studio, uh, Fortuna Female Society and, and different um, organisations within the borough now. We, we're spreading a bit wider. So we just thought it'd be nice to have a bit of a guide for people who think, oh, I've never done it before. They might be more inclined to do the Big Garden Bird Watch this year with them um, not being as busy perhaps or not not kind of traveling about as much so we just thought yeah if, you, if we could get a little guide um that bring everything together and, and and give a bit of um information as well yeah yeah great it's a great idea because uh, i think <clears throat> i think the fact that we are in lockdown and, and and you know i mean i i work i'm sat at my desk now and i work here kind of eight nine till five eight till four yeah. whatever it is you know, and emails coming in and all the rest of it, but but you still feel very, very isolated. So very early on, I decided that I was going to set up by the window. So um, my distractions, and I've, I've got to say, you know, work are really good about it because they are saying to you, take breaks, you know, make sure that everything's shut down at dinner time and all the rest of it. So I can't fault them for that. <clears throat> the good thing for me is I've still got that connection with nature because that's that's what it's about. It's that connection. Um, and that buzz out of seeing, you know, wild things in the habitat and, and, and kind of the way that kind of life is, is going on out there. So um, round about this time, I mean, it's quite interesting round about this time because in the winter, winter time going into springtime, you, you've got a little bit in between. You've got things that are happening. You know, I've seen last week or so, I've seen things starting to build nests. Um, you know, there's, there's kind of territorial stuff going on. We've got some chimney pots, which I'll try and show you in, in a minute here. 
and they have jackdaws in, so the jackdaws nest in there. But this year, we've actually got some uh, magpies in, and the magpies are trying to take over, so the jackdaws are having a go at them, magpies are having a go at them. And then all of a sudden, yesterday, when I was sat here going through an email, I saw absolute commotion going on because two carrying crows had come in. So the carrying crows have a pathological dislike of magpies. They hate magpies. So anytime you get a magpie and a crow in, it's fun and games because they just, you know, try, trying to run each, out, each other out of town a bit like an old Western, you know. So it's, it's really, really good. The other thing that, that birds are doing, we're coming into kind of springtime. So they, they're again setting up territories. Uh, they, again, they're trying to sing, you know, and, and make sure that they, they, they've got enough room to bring the, the youngsters up. Uh, so, it, so it's good. It, uh, there's a lot going on out there at the minute. And, it, and it's affected by the weather. Because as you know, this, this week weather-wise, I mean, it's, it's reasonably okay out there now. It's quite dull. You know, there's not much sunshine. But we've had hail, we've had uh, lots of snow, which is unusual for where we live. Um, and snow is great because it tends to deaden the sound so you can hear the sounds and, and you know, you, you notice more and more. So for me, it's just a distraction being by the window. As I've been talking to you, I'm watching things coming into our feeders. In fact, there's long tail tits just coming into the feeders and a, and a blue tit. Um, long tail tits are fantastic. I always call them flying lollipops because they look like you've thrown a lollipop because they're these wonderful tails at the back. So it, it's kind of full of, of really good birds. And, and it's really important for us to kind of look at them and understand them. I just like trying to weigh up what they're doing, you know, why, why they're here and, and, and to see the interaction. So it's, uh, it's great. Do you, want to, do you want to see the view? Should I show you the view? So yeah, very special. Yeah, that, yeah, no, that'd be great. Uh, you, you kind of see what I mean. Oh, I'm going to have to <laughs> maneuver in this. Here, here we go. So, so here, is, here is the back. Oh, yeah. And you can see that we have, I don't know whether this will work, I'm pointing in, I don't know. Well, <laughs> oh, that's weird. You see the chimney stack? Yeah, yeah. And you see things like blackbirds, uh, so that's pretty good. Down at the bottom I've got my shed and I've got some trees and you can just see in the breeze, it's just moving about now because we've got uh, a flock, a mixed flock, a winter flock of long tail tits and, and, and blue tits. It's probably great tit as well. Mm -hmm. So it's really quite exciting. It's pretty, pretty good. I um, spend a lot of time being distracted and, and it's great. And that's you quite, know, it, it seems like quite a, a distance, isn't it? So do you use your, do you have your binoculars at hand? Is that a, is that something you would um, encourage people to do? Yeah, well, we don't have binoculars. Yeah. We've got loads of pairs of binoculars in this house because I've got a bit of an obsession with binoculars and I keep buying them because I keep seeing them cheap and I just think, oh, I could do with some of them. Uh, and I've recently bought some that have got a really good close focus, you know, for insects and things. Because I do a lot of work with spiders and insects and stuff like that. So, yeah, so we always have these. They're not the best binoculars in the world. They're not the most expensive binoculars in the world. But it just enables me to get a, a bit more kind of from the distance. I mean, as, as I look now, I can see one of the jackdaws he's not actually he's not actually up in the uh, in the chimney pot he's on a tree at the back but i wouldn't be able to see the jackdaw without this i kind of know they're around and i can see the silhouette but yeah just to give you a little bit of a, a, a an extra uh but you can do it without binoculars it's really easy to do it without binoculars and, and one of the things that i always say and i think i've said on the on the big garden bird watch the most important thing you've got are these things, these ears. I mean, I have big flappy ones, so it's all right. But listening to bird call and looking at bird call um, is, is, a, is a massive thing. People say to me, it must be really difficult to learn bird calls. And you know what? It isn't really. It's, it's like most things. It's just that thing about repetition and doing it and, and, and finding you know, you know, finding out what the different things are. And I always say, if you hear a bird calling, if you then look through your binoculars and see it, then it tends to stick in your head then. So in, in terms of bird calls at the minute, 
I mean, bird call is fantastic. It's a fantastic thing. Birds sing for different reasons. Birds that sing to say, this is my patch, this is my territory. They also sing um, to bring in females, you know. Um, some of them just sing, seem to sing for the sheer fun of it. And something as common as a robin actually has different songs for different times of the year. And the robins now are using the winter song. But the robin's call to me is very, very indistinct and it almost sounds like it's underwater. It, it's, it's a real kind of, um, it, it almost fades away to nothing, but you can hear it. And of course you can hear it in the middle of the night as well. You know, we have street lights around here and the robins just carry on and carry on. Same as the blackbirds, you know, that there's something. So the, the, the sense of, of hearing is, is a very big thing. So it's not just about your eyes. It's about taking the whole thing in, mm. you know, that's, that's, that's what I always say to people. And where, where, where did you learn the bird call? So obviously you listen to them and then see the birds and then you'll hear it again because you'll, you'll be looking out for it. But is, are there good kind of websites or um, kind of apps and things like that that people can get? There's some fantastic things now. There's some great websites. There's one called um, Zeno Canto, which is, it is the best one, but it's a bit... Don't go near the until you've sorted out your your um you know your kind of common stuff. But RSPB, if you go onto the RSPB site and they do the little bird profiles, usually at the bottom it has a little file that you can click on, and it'll it'll give you the um it, it'll give you the call or the you know you know I mean it can be calls it can be songs. Um, how I did it, I mean I was never I never started off as a bird watcher when I was fifteen. I used to go roaming around the farm fields looking for kezzies. I was obsessed with kestrels. But then I started to notice other things. There's jackdaws just coming through. Sorry about the distraction. Um, and I started to, to see other things. And then, you know, a lot of the birds, you, you, if you've not got decent binoculars, you can't see them. So, so if, you, if you find out the bird calls and listen to the bird calls, it's just that repetition of seeing them. Um, you know, and talking to other bird watchers, there was a guy, an old guy at Moore who sad, sadly passed away now, who used to point things out to me. I could always hear gold crests, and gold crests are really, really high pitched. Uh, and he, at the time, couldn't hear the gold crest because he, he'd lost some of his hearing. So he, I used to point out the gold crest to him, and he, he would tell me about other things. And, you know, lots, lots and lots of people, lots and lots of people that I've, I've met on the way through have been doing it since it was. 15, 16, something like that. Do you think it helps to, um, you know, like um, when they say in uh, in training where if somebody tells you the name in work, say, if you repeat it back, then you remember it. Do, do you think that's something people could do if they hear it? Should they repeat it <laughs> or is it a bit mad? <laughs> yeah, no, you can you can do that. And I mean, you, if you go into the field, I mean, you've got a field guide there, field mm. guide there, the, the RSPB one, I think it is, isn't it? It is, yeah. Well, that'll have things in it like, uh, I tell you what, go to Yellowhammer, right? If you find the Yellowhammer, what happens is people put words in to, to kind of tell you what different birds uh, sing like. And the Yellowhammer is always quoted as being a little bit of bread and no cheese. Oh, right, let me see where it'll be. What will it be under? Uh, it'll be near to the back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, could, I could, in fact, just look it up. 2.17. There we go. It's right at the back, yeah. That's the one. So the call is a little bit of bread and no cheese. So it's like a... <laughs> so people do that. The great tits that are here, um, you know, very, very yellow on the front. They have the black tie going down. They have the white cheeks. You'll see them coming in, one of the commonest birds. A lot of the time, what they actually do is, is they, they have lots and lots of different calls. And one of them is teacher, teacher, teacher. Uh -huh. You can hear that one, teacher, teacher, teacher. Brilliant. You know, very prevalent at, uh, out in and around your garden and in woodland as well. So, yeah, it's just, it's just a case of kind of learning a few, really. Yeah. And what about... Um... You know, how do people start out? How should they set up? You know, especially if they're at home. It, it, obviously, we've got us. We can look out out the window. Is there something they can do to encourage birds to come to the the, the garden in the first place, or come near to the where they're looking? 
Yeah, I mean, preparation is, 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 is one of the things that you need to do. I mean, you'll have an area that you've got set out. You might have a bird table, you might have a feeding station. Whatever you've got, the more that you put out and the more regular you're putting it out, the more birds you're going to have coming in because the birds have got to find them. You know, there's, there's not kind of, the birds don't go on the internet, where's the, where's the best place to feed? They've got to find it and then they communicate it and then other birds see them going in and, and then the other birds will go to where that food is. So if you're going to do your big garden bird watch, uh, which is this coming weekend, make sure you've got stuff out on your feeders and put quite a bit of variety out. You know, it's it's not all about kind of leftovers and, and scraps. If you if you put things like bacon rinds out, if you if you've had a bacon butty, uh, you know, robins love things like that. Um, the seeds that you can buy. I mean, you can buy wonderful mixes of seeds now. Some of them, you know, things like. Um, sunflower heart seeds um there's lots of kind of niger seeds there's lots of kind of exotic stuff we can put out for birds now and it does bring in different species you know niger seeds will bring in things like goldfinch which are really spectacular looking birds but really really common you know you'll get them in, in the back garden and front probably so yeah that's it if people want to do the Big Garden Bird Watch and, and they go to the RSPB website, they can download the guide and that's where they put the um, input, the count that they've done. Yes. Um, yeah. But if they're going to do that this weekend, 29th to the 31st, is it better yeah. to start putting bird feed out now? So each yeah. day maybe leading up to it so that by the weekend, birds might have found it by then? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, just, just you know, just keep putting it out there and just just... Make sure that the birds know where it is and, and kind of what it is. Mm. The other thing is just from looking at the birds feeding in a particular area, that itself is really, really good because you'll start to understand a bit more about the birds and, and how the birds are behaving. You know, you, you'll see which are the first ones that get there. You know, what, what are the first ones to notice? What are the ones that are bullies? Because sometimes once they get there, they'll puff the chests up and put the feathers out. I mean, robins are classics for that. Blackbirds are classics for that. Um, the other thing is, what about timing? You know, if at 10, 10.30 in the morning, you get a flock of long-tailed tits coming in, are they there next day at 10.30? Can you actually predict when they're coming in? And it's these interactions between the birds and, and the bird species. The other thing here, once we get lots and lots of birds coming in, then's the time really to be to be keeping an eye out for something like a sparrowhawk because there's lots of you know raptors about i mean we we have we're really lucky here because we have peregrines i mean i i can look across the fiddler's ferry we have peregrines at fiddler's ferry and also in and around the bridges but sparrowhawks are the real urban bird of prey very often a sparrowhawk will come through and it will whip along the hedge and it and they just flip out from the hedge and just batter into where all these birds are Nine times out of ten, they don't get anything. But when they do kill something, they'll take it off and they'll dismantle it, you know. It can be quite quite a cruel yeah. uh, world for birds, you know. The other thing I always think about is roosting time as well, because you can watch birds late on at night. When birds go into roost, just think about how, how vulnerable they, they must feel, you know, and how cold it gets. I mean, it's bad enough in here, you know. We've got mm -hmm. the on and all the rest of it it's absolutely freezing if you're a bird and you're that big it must be terrible out there must not it so it's strategies for that you know how they actually cope with that it's all really really interesting yeah. and it's not, it's not something that you need loads of equipment it's not something that you need you know hefty clothing because i'm just doing it through the window so it's absolutely i do don't even need binoculars you just need these and these yeah. so it's ideal it's really really good and it's a bit of citizen science it's not like we, we're not doing it um, um you know we're just doing it for a bit of a laugh mm. the garden bird watch has been go going now for over 20 years close on to 30 years actually mm. um and the data that we find every year shows us the fluctuations you know what's doing well what isn't doing well i mean there was a big slump there's a big slump with starlings we're getting less and less starlings mm -hmm. there was a big slump in house sparrows i get loads of house sparrows here and house sparrows last year were one of the commoner birds that people were getting so it shows the kind of peaks and troughs and the dips in kind of what's going on there and if we're losing the birds are we losing the insects are we losing the bigger things so you start getting into all that global warming mm -hmm. and weather patterns and it's dead interesting. It's really interesting stuff. 
What about what um, what people could expect? Would it be like if you were to go out into the park like we would normally? Um, mm. Say you're on your, your your daily exercise and you're just taking a walk and you just think, oh, well, I'll just check the birds and, and submit it. Are you likely to see different things in, in an open space like a park than you would do your garden? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, the park is great because the park has lots and lots of different bits. You, you, you know, you've got fields, you've got lawns, you've got, you know, bedding plants. You can then walk through. I mean, the pet have got that wonderful little area, that little woodland area is full of stuff, even grey squirrels and stuff like that. And then you get out to where the boating lake is. So you've got lots of black headed gulls. You've got Canada geese, you know, leaving the mess everyone, honking along and being quite boisterous. You've got your swans. Swans are always great fun, unless they decide to, to attack you with your pram, you know. So there's all that kind of stuff going on. So, so that's a really good place. But let me tell you about last Saturday. Last Saturday, I went for a paper, as I normally do. Nip out for the Guardian. It was atrocious weather. Started snowing. But on a little bit of a loop round here, I saw wrens, I saw all the blackbirds, loads of robins. I mean, robins are just queuing up just to go, hi, I'm a robin, feed me. Um, but then I noticed that there was a buzzard that come over from one of the woodlands across one of the one of the major roads that we've got here. There were missile thrushes, really big speckled birds going right high up in the canopies of trees and singing. They're one of the few things that will sing during a storm. The old name for them was the stormcock, the missile thrush. So there was missile thrushes, which really we don't get too much around here. Uh, there was nut hatches, you know, and I heard the drumming of a woodpecker, which again is, is absolutely phenomenal, you know, because we had some trees at the back end. The guy at the back took the trees down and that was why we got nut hatches. That was why we got the, the great spot woodpecker. Um, so it's a bit, it was a bit of a downer that, but I can still see him kind of up the road. And you've got skeins of geese going across, you've got gulls, there's a black-headed gull just going past now, as, even as we speak. So yeah, there's a lot going on, and, and you can do a five minute, ten minute, quarter of an hour walk, and if you're aware of the things around you, you can get quite a little list going. Yeah, brilliant. A good buzz, you know, to see stuff. So what's, what's the kind of top tips for people getting involved in, in bird watching? would you say? An easy guide for them to, to kind of remember? Okay, I'll give you five top tips, yeah? So, five top tips we've already talked about. Prepare your feeders and pre pre prepare your areas that you're going to actually watch. Decide if you want binoculars. I mean, what the RSPB is saying on this particular one is do it out your window, do it out the back door. You know, don't, you don't need to go out. You can, you can kind of still isolate. Get yourself comfortable, right? This is the next one, the domestics. Make sure you've nipped the loo because it's going to be an hour and it's going to be cold. Get yourself a brew, decent mug of coffee, mug of tea. Right, make sure you're warm. Okay, there's nothing worse than, than not being warm, even if you're out there like we used to go bird watching out in the wilds, you know. Um, decent seat, you know, you don't want to be uncomfortable, do you? So, you know, creature comforts are good. The other thing that I've said, learn the calls, because if you learn the calls, you can listen as things are coming in and kind of predict what you're going to see. Um, the other thing, and this is quite controversial, and some of my bird watching mates will not like me saying this, don't become like a Victorian naturalist. Do you want me to do my impression of a Victorian naturalist? Okay, Victorian naturalist is like this. Oh, here's a bird. Bang! Shoots it, falls to the ground, picks it up. Oh, it's a goldfinch. Ticks it off. They were obsessed with this collecting mentality and a lot of bird watchers are obsessed with this collecting mentality. You know what? I know it's, it's about data. I know it's about citizen science. It's much more important for you to enjoy the birds than to give them a label. You know, when you go down and, and you look at, if you go to Spike Island and you see all those birds that are there, do you really need to know what the names are? You know, and, and that is an obsession that bird watchers particularly get, especially twitches and people like that I mean now I, I've been able to travel and get you know to various parts of the world uh, and when I'm there I'm, I'm bird watching I always have binoculars with me and it's great to see new stuff it's great to see things that are spectacular but our common birds are really really interesting the lifestyles are really really interesting 
but you don't need to know what, what they call particularly. You don't need to know the distinctions. If you see lots and lots of different things coming in and, and you know it might be blue tick, gray tick, long tail tick, it's great just to see how they interact and, and, and what goes on, on with them. So don't be too obsessive about labeling stuff, I always say. I mean, don't get me wrong, if something comes through now and it flashes a wind bar and it's, it's 100 feet up, I can tell what it is, but it's not rocket science, it's not clever. It's just something that I've done and done and done. As I always say, it's like tying your shoelaces. It's just something you've got to learn. So the main one, number five in my top tips, enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. You've got to enjoy it. There's got to be something that keeps bringing you back. And that's what happens with me. You know, that's why I'll go out and have a walk and I'll, and I'll see what's around and, uh, and stuff like that. Why you do things like this, really? Because it's two things. It's birds and it's people. And it's that connection between these birds are doing exactly what we're doing. You know, if you think about about what's happening now, we're, we're kind of struggling. We're not communicating very well. We're, we're, we're isolated. We're, we're cold. And we, that's exactly what the birds have got to put up with all the time it's all about kind of peer pressure it's about where they fit in it's about interaction it's about being good with your neighbors you know actually letting other people get at the trough kind of thing it, it's all about that it, it's classic kind of more in common stuff isn't it it really is and then birds that's what they do day in day out brilliant i'm so it's really good to hear that about um not um being obsessive about the, the names and things like that, because that's kind of how I feel about it. I've liked birds forever, really, and spent a lot of time looking at them, but I wouldn't say I was the best at being able to name them. I just look at them and go, oh, that's nice. Look at that. That makes me feel good. <laughs> I like that. That exists. And so the, other, the other thing is, once you start to notice birds, what will happen is, and this is what trips you into the bird watching thing, you'll see something and you'll go, hang on a minute, what's that? Mm. that doesn't look like I wonder what that is then you go and get your book yeah you go and look through yeah you know and sometimes it's a great thing if you're out there just just you know do a little sketch you don't have to be da Vinci you know what I mean yeah. I mean yeah, it can be it. quite darling yeah, you know it usually is if I do <laughs> <laughs> but um it'll give you the coloration it'll give you the you know a little bit about the shape of it does it look like a ball is it elongated when it flies does it do this kind of thing all those things are, are, are all enabling you to put a name to the bird if you want to do it but what i'm saying is you don't have to do it yeah just enjoy it and the information is all, all out there on the rspb website isn't it for you and lots of guides and obviously you've got winter watch as well which you know yeah. is, is, is it's two weeks this this year which is really nice and really really helpful and yeah as you said the main thing is to enjoy it and you know maybe take some photographs of you uh, bird watching and um, put them on the social medias for more in common halton and you can hashtag um, M I C H Birds of Hope, which is more in common, Halton Birds of Hope. So we want to see your pictures that you've coloured in and your three D birds. I've got Mitch Birds. I know what Mitch Birds Mitch is. Mitch Birds, yeah, oh, Mitch Birds. Right, okay. Mitch Birds, Mitch Birds of Hope. <laughs> yeah, it's not a secret code. It's just more in common. Oh, right. um, and um, yeah, just, you know, kind of enjoy, as, uh, as Anthony said, enjoy, uh, enjoy, enjoy, which is the best thing and share with us if you can. So thank you very much for sharing your top tips. No and problem. Guide and, what, you know, opening up bird watching for many, because I'm sure um, some people are a bit nervous about it, but hopefully now they'll get involved and not feel too pressured to know everything, which is great. So thank yep. you very much. Enjoy bird watching. <laughs> The other thing as well, you know, if anyone wants to know anything, if, if, you, if you want tips or, or whatever, you, you've got my email, just, just forward them on. Just, Absolutely, yeah. and we'll be able to find out more from you in the future because you've got a website being launched, haven't you? I have indeed, yeah. But I think it's, uh, I should know this, shouldn't I? You, you can see how professional I am. It's, um, I think it's www.hesitantweasel.co.uk. Hesitantweasel.co.uk. Yeah, so so stuff that I do are usually brand as the hesitant weasel, hesitant weasel guide to. So this has been a lockdown birding. 
Yeah, Hesitant Breeze, a guide to lockdown birding. You've uh, had an exclusive there. So enjoy it and um, report in and um, do get involved in the RSPB Big Garden Bird Watch. But uh, thank you very much, everybody. And thank you to Anthony Brandra. See you soon. And I've had nothing on that table all this time. Outrageous. It's all come now. <laughs> you told you, you promised me blackbirds and all kinds of nothing. I've got to superimpose them. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> See you later. Take care.